We welcome you here this evening, especially if you're just starting to get involved here at First United Presbyterian Church. Tonight we've come to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. A tenebrae service is a service that moves from light to darkness. And we have a beautiful hymn in our hymnal that uh, goes from light to darkness and follows the entire story of Jesus' last hours. And we'll be singing a verse of that hymn after each reading. And the scripture readings will do the same thing. They'll start with the evening from last evening, Thursday evening, and then they'll move towards darkness and towards Christ's death on the cross. And then at the end of the service, we'll depart in silence. We're thankful to have you here. Let's begin with our opening prayer, which is printed in your bulletin, and it will be on the screen as well. You suffered on the cross and gave your life as a ransom for many. We bless and thank you for the outpouring of your love and offer our worship out of unspeakable gratitude. We adore you, our Savior and Lord. Amen. There is a cross that held the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship God. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth. But you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and, and mighty, holy immortal one, one have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Forty years I led you through the desert, feeding you with manna on the way. I gave you my body, the bread of heaven, but you made a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud of fire, but you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I made you branches of the vine and never left your side. I poured out my life and gave you the new covenant. I washed your feet as a sign of my love, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy immortal, immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. I gave you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name. I opened the water to lead you to the promised land. You opened my side with a spear. I lifted you up to the heights, but you lifted me high upon a cross. I raised you from death and prepared for you the tree of life, but you have made a cross for your Savior. Holy, holy God, God, holy and mighty, holy, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Amen.
from Matthew, verses 20 through 25. The Shadow of Betrayal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed Jesus, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, You have said so. Six thirty-six through 41 the shadow of the garden then Jesus went with the dis- went with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them sit here while I go over there and pray he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated then he said to them I am deeply grieved even to death Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little further, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then Jesus came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Reading number three, Matthew 26, uh, 42 through 45, the shadow of Christ's agony. Again, Jesus went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. 
Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then Jesus came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Matthew 26, 47 through 50, the shadow of arrest. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. through 50, the shadow of desertion. Then Jesus said to the crowd, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled.
reading 6 from Luke 22, verses 54 through 62, the shadow of denial. Then they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But Peter denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. seventh reading, Luke 23, verses 33 to 46, the shadow of the cross. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying in a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last.
You did it all for us. In your Son, Jesus Christ. You suffered betrayal. You prayed for us in the garden. You experienced everyone abandoning you, all of your followers. You experienced the denial of one of your dearest friends. And then you stretch out your arms on the cross. And there we beheld your heart poured out in love. Thank you that it was all for us. Do not hurry from the cross. Linger near to survey, to stand, to ponder our Savior's suffering and death. Consider carefully and well the preciousness of his sacrifice for you, the greatness of his mercy toward you. Then depart from Golgotha confidently, 
knowing that the Spirit will keep you in your crucified Savior's strong embrace and prompt you to trust and obey in him always. The God of peace go with you. Amen.